Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform. Please reach out to me directly for pricing. Email tmosso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a model launched in late 2021 for the 2022 model year in stainless steel. This is the Grand Seiko High Beat Diver SBGH 289, and it hails from the the Grand Seiko Sport Collection. So, taking a quick look at the SBGH 289 on my 16 centimeters circumference wrist, you can see it's broad because end link to end link, it's almost 53 millimeters across the wrist. It's pushing right out to the edge of my wrist. See those end links? They're pushing out to the edge and there's not much clearance left before I get overlap. So, you need to wear this watch on a wrist my size or larger, 16 centimeters circumference or up. The cuff shot reveals the watch to be thinner than expected. It should fit underneath almost any sleeve even dress shirts. You just need a big wrist for it. The bracelet is nicely made, and you can see that it features a conforming end link. Also something that is becoming more common on Grand Seiko watches, which is a wide spacing between the lugs to give them a more modern look. The bracelet does have a little bit of taper as the links neck down from the end link to the clasp. And then we have a combination of polished intermediates and then satin finished center links with satin finished shoulder links that include polished outer faces and a little rolled bevel from their tops to their flanks. You can see that this bracelet is fixed with pin sleeves, which means you need a block and a punch to size the bracelet but it is a very secure system once sized. A more flexible sizing system comes in the form of four divots inside the clasp, so you can use your strap tool to change the anchoring point of the bracelet in the clasp, but we have more. We have a quick release system that is a dive extension capable of serving up many individual increments. You lift these two tabs internally, and what makes this special is that you can actually do the sizing while the watch is still on the wrist, so you don't risk dropping your watch in a marine environment where the water might be hundreds or thousands of feet deep. There's always an advantage to being able to adjust your watch, your dive watch, without taking it off the wrist. That's something you get only on the Rolex Deep Sea. Every other Rolex diver needs to be taken off the wrist to adjust. What I also like here is that the total range of adjustment is so vast, it's over 25 millimeters. I think it's about 30 millimeters all told, which means it's more than one inch. Uh, but you can also use it for incremental sizing. If your wrist expands a little bit during periods of activity, you can adapt to that too. Once more, we have both the twin trigger release and the clamshell lock, so it locks once, then it locks again. And you can see externally a combination of chiseling, polishing, and satination. The case features black polish on its side. This is what Grand Seiko calls Zeratsu polish. Although the Zalitz machines on which this finish is executed are of European origin, the foremost practitioners of this optically smooth mirror polishing today, they are the folks at Seiko and Grand Seiko and Crador. And so the surface is held against a spinning tin plate and it is polished until a mirror shine results. And this takes about three years to master. It is a craft art. It is done manually. And so this watch has a hand-finished case. You will not find any comparably priced Swiss dive watch that has a genuinely hand-finished case. There's a little bit of a bevel along the edge of the case. There's satin finishing on the lug hoods. We have a screw-down crown. We have crown guards. The watch is 200 meters water resistant. And I give Grand Seiko great credit for simply putting the diving depth in meters and not, for example, printing an inexact conversion of meters to feet. You ever wonder why so many 300 meter dive watches say 1,000 feet? Yeah, so do I, they're not equivalent. 200 meters needs no conversion, we know what it means. The bezel, a super silky and refined 120 click action. I would say it's comparable to some of the silkiest bezels I've encountered from Rolex and Cartier. Yes, Cartier makes a dive watch, the Calibre de Cartier Diver, and this has a similar feel to that. You can see that the knurling is sharp enough that you'll be able to grip it with wet hands. It's satinated outside and then internally it's polished. We have what I believe to be an ADLC bezel, so it's definitely not ceramic. I think it's amorphous diamond-like carbon. And ADLC is super scratch resistant super hard. Really, it's just as hard as ceramic, but the main difference here is that it scratches whereas ceramic shatters, and that's long been the design ethic at Grand Seiko. Build a bezel that can maybe be disfigured, but won't fall apart under extreme conditions. 
Now there's plenty of luminescence, as you can see. The watch features an unusual combination of a broad arrow minute hand, a lollipop seconds hand, and a cathedral style that is aviation like our hand. But it's easy to see where the bezel pearl is. It's large, it's luminous, and you can quickly align and time your dive. Also, I prefer dive bezels to chronographs. Frankly, I rarely time anything over an hour. So having a full 60 minutes rather than a chrono 30 minute register, and you know, here you can see what a chrono 30 minute register is like. Well, a dive bezel gives you 60. And I find them easier to read, and they don't have the downstream service costs that come with a chronograph. The dial features applique metallic indices, which is an upscale look. And then we have a matte blue base with a large flange outboard against which minutes and seconds can be read. And also, pursuant to resisting glare, not only do we have a matte finish dial base, but the hands, the primary hands, hours and minutes are satinated across their top. Underneath the case back, you can't see it, but we have a high beat automatic caliber. And you can see it is the 9S85. It's written on the case back, very simply. So this movement is a high beat automatic with 55 hour power reserve. It has hacking seconds, a quick set date, it beats at 36,000 vibrations per hour like a Zenith El Primero, which is why the seconds hand has a smoother glide than, for example, a movement that beats at 28,800 vibrations per hour. This is 10 beats per second. It has a different sound against the ear and a different appearance to the eye. The movement pivots on 37 joules. It is watchmaker made, watchmaker adjusted, adjusted in six positions, not the chronometer standard of five. And the watch is adjusted to run exceptionally to no worse than minus three plus five seconds per day. Remember, a chronometer standard is minus four plus six per day. So this watch goes above and beyond that. And of course, Grand Seiko and Seiko, they make every part of a watch from the loom to the shock protection to the very lubricants used inside the watch. It is a complete manufactured product. Reach out to T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.